So I've made a few of these wood wall art signs now. And if you want a full tutorial, I will link it here as well as down in the descriptions. But for this one, I thought it would be fun for you guys to watch the process of how I made this since it's slightly different. And I'll talk about some of the tips and tricks that I've learned from doing so many of these. One thing that has helped me the most is when making my pattern, I leave a small gap near the edge on all four sides. This allows me to make my whole pattern and have four perfect sides that are factory cut since I use a project panel that's already been pre-cut for me. Now to hide this small gap around all four sides, I just use a trim piece in the end. This also helps so that I don't have to be so precise and make sure that it lines up exactly with the edge. When creating my design, I like to draw what I envision on the board when I start. That way I kind of know what I'm cutting for and what I'm hoping to achieve. Then once my design is fully cut, I like to trace around it so that when I take these pieces off, I know exactly where it needs to go back. Along these same lines, whenever painting or staining, I like to keep all the pieces where they're going to be and in the order that they're going to be in. That way, when I go to put everything back together, it should fit exactly how I cut it and exactly how I laid it out. Because this wood is not the most high quality wood, it sometimes bows certain areas or just lines up differently on different sides. So if you cut something one direction, then you end up painting it, staining it, and moving it to the other side and switching around a couple pieces, it can actually throw off your whole design. So you'll see here that when I'm staining, I have everything where it should be and I don't move it out of place. It's also a bit tricky when you start putting your pattern back together. You think you remember where everything goes, but it can actually be a little confusing. So it's nice just to have everything where it's supposed to be so that it can help remind you when putting it back together. Now I like to work in sections when I cut these signs. So for example, I cut this big mountain first and laid it in place before I cut the other mountains. And that's just because your angles can change slightly as you go. Like I was talking about before, this wood is not high quality. So if you have one board that's bowed a little bit, it will change the next mountain next to it. So I like to cut parts of the project at a time and if possible, actually nail it in place before moving on to other parts. That way you can use this first set to kind of set the pace for the angles and things that you will need going forward. As for the products that I use on these signs, there really is no one glue that I have found is better than any other. You could really use whatever wood glue that you want. This does not have to be waterproof. Your sign should not be getting wet. So I just use Type Bond because it's what I have, but you can really use anything that you want. And if you have a preference for Type Bond 1, 2, or 3, then use your favorite. I know that everybody has their own opinion on what kind of glue is best for them. So the nice thing is with this project, you truly can use what you like and what works well for you. Now, as for the paint, I have found that I just like a semi-gloss paint. I usually just buy the sample size in the store so that I don't have a giant can of paint that I'm not going to use. I have tried using chalk paint before and it actually goes on really well. However, it just doesn't quite look right or hold up as well in the end. I also like to always end with a gloss at the end. 
So you're going to want to cover it with some sort of a gloss or a polyurethane or something like that. In the beginning, I did not do it. I even tried using a wax one time and it just didn't repel the dust like I had hoped and the sign just appeared dirty. With this one, I did all the mountains first just so I could put them in place before starting any of the sky pieces. So the reason that I did this is just because when I get to the sky pieces, there's going to be multiple angles that I'm cutting in there and it's going to be way easier to do and cut down on any error if I have all of the mountains in place first. So just kind of look through your design and you're going to want to just piece it out and work with parts of it so that you can make sure that you're getting any angles correct. You might need to cut just a slightly off angle on your saw. So for some of these, I went to cut a 45 and it just was too much or too little. Again, just because the boards don't always line up as they should. So when I needed to, I just changed the angle slightly and made sure that it was fitting together properly. Now in a sign like this, where I'm going to have some boards running horizontally, I need to also make sure that they are all running straight. So again, you just think through what you need to do in this project. And if I'm working on the lower pieces up, there's a chance that I could end up with the boards not quite horizontal all the way across. So this is why I just worked from the top down when cutting to make sure that everything was lined up horizontally. But then when I actually do my design, I was working from the bottom up, but I did have the whole design in place. So these signs can be a little bit confusing. It's just thinking it through and deciding where you need to start from. I like to use a small board on the back so that I can hang a hanger that goes on the wall on it. If you don't put this on, then you risk drilling into your project to put on the hanger. And the hanger that I like to use best is a hangman cleat, and I will link that down below. And this is just because it's wide enough that I can fit it into two studs in the wall and it really hooks in solid. So I know that that sign is not going to move anywhere and it's going to be hung straight and nicely on the wall. I like to use a wood filler just to cover up any of the nail holes that are standing out. Now I don't use it on anywhere that is stained and if the nails really aren't showing too much, then I don't use it. Just because it looks cleaner if you actually do not do the wood filler, but sometimes it's necessary. Now, if you're using a pin nailer, I think you could probably get away with not doing this step at all. However, I just haven't gone out and purchased one yet, so I'm using the nailer that I have currently. Thank you so much for watching.